and I'm a professor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the producer and the subject in the film Shot Down, Steve Snyder. Hello, Steve, and welcome. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here, Eric. It is great to have you and have you here for this um, really interesting film. to work with you to create this film? I'm sorry, uh, could you repeat that, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you tell us how um, this film came about, how you worked with the, the director, Michael uh, Mazur, to um, get this film done? Sure. Well, uh, I've made uh, six trips to Belgium uh, over the years. My first trip was in 1994 with my, with my parents. And on two of our trips, uh, we did some filming uh, in 2016 and 2018. Uh, my youngest son, Clayton, who was a film studies major in, at college, and I uh, went over uh, with different individuals to film all these locations uh, where the events took place in Belgium. And we had hundreds and oh, just hours and hours and hours of footage and uh, initially we thought we might make a, doc, a full length documentary uh, out of it, but uh, we didn't really know where to start. And then when we investigated it more, it seemed like making a full length documentary was gonna be a little expensive. So finally, uh, my, my son Clayton, uh, he was an actor as well uh, for a while in Hollywood. So he had connections. And uh, he knew Michael Mazur, who was an editor and uh, a, a filmmaker. So we just gave him all this footage and said, well, why don't we just do something shorter and we can have, maybe have a documentary short and then use it as a, a trailer perhaps uh, to see if we could get any interest in anyone who would be interested in making a feature film uh, uh, about the book. And so, we gave this to Michael and then he came back with this 13 minute documentary short, which uh, was the end result. And I was uh, really astounded by, by what he did because I had no idea exactly what he was gonna do. Most of the footage in the, in the, in the film was of me uh, uh, talking, but then I provided Michael with a lot of uh, photographs we've, we've taken over the years. And uh, he incorporated those and then interviews I did with people in Belgium and then the Luftwaffe pilot Hans Berger that shot down my dad. And he did a fabulous job. I thought, I go to a lot of film festivals and so I see movies and documentaries. And I thought, well, I think this is just as, as good as some of the things that I see in film festivals. So I go, I'm gonna enter it in, into film festivals and see what happens. And uh, it, it's done pretty well and it's been an amazing experience. Indeed, uh, it's great that you decided to um, bring uh, this book to life. Uh, even more people are probably exposed to it. Um, so let's get to one of the um, parts of the story. Um, you meeting um, Hans Berger. Um, tell us, how did that come about and why did you want to meet him? Okay. Oh, well, all my dad knew and all the U.S. Uh, Air Force military knew was that my dad's uh, B-17 bomber was attacked by two German fighters, uh, Falk Wolf 190s. And that's all I thought I'd ever know. Um, it didn't even dawn on me doing when I was in, starting my research to try to find him because I thought it'd be impossible. Most likely he died in the war or it's 50 years later. He probably passed on. Good chance that he passed on by then. By, and then I can't speak German. Uh, but one day my wife uh, just casually said, well, why don't you try to find the German pilot that shot down your dad's plane? And at the time I thought it was a foolish idea. She, you know, she's naive. She doesn't know what she's talking about. But like a good husband, I did what she told me to do. And uh, I went on Google and uh, just put in trying to find a Luftwaffe pilot and a couple of forums came up, which I joined. And I posted an inquiry because I knew the day that my dad's plane was shot down, the time of day and the location. And then a week, two guys got back to me, one from Belgium and one from England. And on that day, there were 12 B-17 shot down and the one that was shot down south of Chimay, Belgium, which was just north of the French border, shot down by Hans Berger. And uh, 
he became a translator after the war, so he speaks perfect English. Uh, the man from Belgium who contacted me, he was a Luftwaffe historian, had written a number of books about the Luftwaffe, which is the German Air Force. And uh, he, he knew Hans uh, from his research. And so he sent Hans, he contacted Hans and asked Hans would be okay if I contacted him about this book that I was writing. And Hans said, uh, okay. And I was so elated and so excited uh, to find Hans. Um, and then I found out that the, at the same time that Hans shot down my dad's plane, the gunners on my dad's plane shot Hans down. They actually shot each other down, which is amazing. And uh, Hans bailed out and he made it uh, through the war. And uh, for the book, I just interviewed him uh, over the telephone and through email. It wasn't until after I wrote the book that I actually went and met uh, Hans in person a couple of times. Yeah, but you just said you were elated. Oh, but this is the man who shot down, could have killed your father. Why were you elated to find him? Uh, that's a very good question. I get asked that uh, quite frequently. You know, people say, well, don't you hate this guy that shot down your dad's plane? Uh, but really, in essence, he was pretty much just like the American airman. He was 19, 20 years old, just a young guy fighting for his country, trying to do a job and, and trying to stay alive. And uh, I felt a personal connection with Hans because World War II was the defining moment of my dad's life, probably for any man uh, who fought in World War II. There was nothing that could uh, surpass that. And at one point in history, one point in time, my dad's path and Hans' path, you know, crossed. So Hans is part of my dad's story, part of my dad's life. And so I felt a real, uh, you know, connection to him and, and we, we've become friends. Uh, he said it was unfortunate that they had to be shooting at each other, but you know, that was war and that what was they were there to do. So no, I, I, I have nothing but uh, positive feelings about, about Hans. And it's been wonderful going to Munich, Germany, where he lives. So what, what was Hans's reaction? Um, was he a little bit leery, a little bit cautious? Because he might think, OK, are you here to finish the job? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did bombard him with questions because I wanted to, you know, find out all this information that I could. And at one point he goes, Steve, uh, you know, you're asking me a lot of personal questions and I really don't know you uh, very well. But, you know, over time I built up his trust and uh, so it, it was uh, okay. Um, since I first uh, talked to him now, he, he's a little uh, hesitant uh, the older he gets to talk about the war because it, it brings back a lot of bad memories. Almost all of his, uh, you know, pilot friends were, were all killed in the war, uh, and he had family that was killed uh, in Germany uh, during the war. So it does have uh, bad memories, and he, he has uh, quite a story. That you know, after the war ended, all the German military men had to go back to their hometowns. He was from Dresden, which was controlled by the Russians in East Germany. And he almost was got captured and was sent to Siberia, and he'd probably die there in a, you know, labor camp. But he uh, escaped into West Germany and escaped the Russians. So he has quite a history as as well. Hey, well, we're talking to the producer and the subject of shot down Steve Snyder. If you have questions, please put them in the Q and A portal, and we'll get to them as time allows. So. Um, can you tell us how this film was received? Um, I don't know if you had a chance to show it overseas or here in the States. What has the, the reaction been to this film? Oh, it's been uh, overwhelmingly positive. It's, uh, uh, I initially showed a uh, kind of a rough cut of the film uh, in 19, uh, 2019 in August at the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Belgium and my dad's plane, uh, plane being shot down uh, there in Southern Belgium. Uh, about 25 relatives of my dad's crew, we went over for the uh, anniversary celebrations. And then 
there's an organization there in Belgium called the Duty to Remember Association that has erected a number of memorials in the area to honor events that took place in liberating the country from four years of Nazi Germany occupation and uh, uh, oppression. And we had a dinner one night. And so I kind of premiered uh, the film there and uh, brought tears to a lot of people's eyes. And then I uh, entered into the various film festivals. It's unfortunate that, that, that my timing on this film coincided with you know, you know, the COVID outbreak, coronavirus outbreak. So all the film festivals uh, last year that was that it was shown in were all shown virtually, and I wasn't able to attend those in person and do Q and A's and get personal feedback. But uh, it's, it's been very positive. It's a very uh, a lot of people tell me when when they watch it, it does bring tears to, uh, to their eyes. But it, it's been uh, gr very gratifying, and I just hope more people uh, can see it. I hope so too, um, such an important history lesson. Another aspect of the film that was very interesting was that after your father was shot down, um, he went on to join the French resistance to fight against the Germans. I mean, he could have had a perfect reason to you know, come back home and possibly be a, a war hero. Well, why was it that he decided to go and join the French resistance? Well, that's, uh, that's a great uh, question uh, too, Eric. Um, after his plane was attacked, uh, two of the crew, a, a B-17 and a 10-man crew, two of the crew members died in the plane. The other air, eight airmen were able to bail out. And after when my dad bailed out, he came down in, into some trees and his parachute got hung up on uh, the branches and he was dangling 20 feet off the ground and couldn't get down. But it was fortunately for him, a couple of young Belgian men, uh, Henri Franken and Raymond Dervan, came to his rescue before the Germans could, uh, could find him. And then he, after that, he was moved from place to place to place, uh, being hidden by various Belgian people. Uh, but finally, he got tired of hiding. Um, he was almost discovered by the German secret police, the Gestapo, on several occasions. And uh, it was very stressful for him. <laughs> You know, after all his planes attacked, it's on fire. He comes down in a foreign country, has no idea where he is, and he's being helped by total strangers. And they, any of these people uh, could be a collaborator and turn him over to the Gestapo. And uh, in, in, on June 6th, uh, when the Allies invaded Normandy on, on D-Day, uh, word filtered up to where he was staying in Belgium that that occurred and he wanted to get back into the fight. Um, Unlike most airmen, he was in the infantry for a year before he went into the Air Force, so he knew how to fight on the ground. Um, but like you say, um, the smart thing or the safe thing to do would have been for him to just stay hidden and stay in hiding with the Belgians and just wait for the U.S. armies to come up through France after D-Day. Um, because joining the French resistance was extremely dangerous. He could have died in the fighting, and if the Germans had captured him, he would have been shot on the spot as a, a terrorist. But he felt it was his duty uh, to get back in the fight. You know, that there were there were soldiers and airmen still fighting, risking their lives, and he felt it was his duty. Um, I doubt if I or many people would have done that. Uh, the, the the courage and bravery that he had to have to decide to fight with the French resistance. Uh, it's kind of mind boggling, but that's what he decided to do. And so he fought with the French resistance against the Germans for a couple months before the US armies did finally come up through France after D-Day and then he met up with them and, and made it back to England. Hmm. So, uh, and yeah, there was several uh, instances or stories in the book or uh, about encounters that uh, he and the, the um, French resistance group, there are about 20 in the, the group that uh, he fought with, uh, had against the Germans. So yeah, uh, amazing. But uh, all those guys who went uh, to fight in World War II were, uh, showed amazing bravery and, and courage to fight for our freedoms that we enjoy today. Hmm. Let me uh, get a little more personal. Um, your dad was definitely an inspiration. How did he inspire you um, in your life? What has he done to make you the person you are today? 
Oh, gosh. Um, um, I loved my parents very dearly. They both died in uh, 2007. Um, they were extremely loving, uh, devoted couple. Um, they were great examples of what a, you know, a happy marriage should be. They were devout Christians, uh, which I am. Uh, just set great examples. My dad, uh, he was kind of, uh, we always, my sisters and I compared him to John Wayne. He was kind of a, a no-nonsense uh, guy. He was a big guy, a rugged guy. Uh, but a loving father, he coached my little league teams. Uh, we spent a lot, of, a lot of time together, and he instilled in us, you know, uh, to be strong, uh, have strong character, to build, you know, strong morals. Uh, you know, just the, the honesty to be a, a good citizen and to work hard. He just instilled all those principles that really. All those people, you know, that during that time, you know, they, I think they are the, the greatest generation and, and instilled and, and tried to preach to their, uh, to their children, you know, it made me do chores, even though, you know, uh, you didn't want to do them. And uh, uh, so he was just a great example as a, of a fine, uh, fine man, a fine Christian man. So it, I, I've tried to, uh, you know, use that uh, in, in my life. So it, uh, I'm very, very blessed. Well, well, good, because um, I know times, you know, people want to try to live up to their parents' expectations, but it seems like he's established a, he and your mom established a great foundation for you to do this testament to him by through your book and through your film. So that was, I'm sure he appreciates this, even though he's passed on, he appreciates what you're doing. Yes, it's unfortunate that you know I didn't decide to do all this while he was still living. Uh, he would have been uh, ama amazed by it. I'm kind of amazed by it. It's really changed my life since I've written this book. It's a whole second career now, because you know, except for last year with uh, the, the coronavirus situation, you know, in most years I travel all over the United States, uh, attending air shows, signing copies of my book, and I do a lot of. Uh, presentations to all sorts of groups all around the United States. Uh, so that's beginning to come back a little bit, bit now, but uh, it's, it's my, uh, my motto is it's our duty to remember, uh, to remember the air war over Europe, World War II, to honor the men who fought it and to try to educate uh, the public about it, especially younger generations, uh, because you know, the end of World War II was 75 years ago and it's fading in people's memories and we kind of we have to try to keep those memories alive and uh, the sacrifice that those people made, as I mentioned earlier, to uh, fight and preserve the freedoms that we enjoy today that so many of us, uh, you know, just take for granted because we've always had them. Absolutely. And um, this is a, a commendable thing that you are doing. Some people might say, oh, he's just trying to you know, capitalize on his father when he's done, but this is done all out of sincerity and done out of, um, like you said, educating um, people to history. And I just love your approach to this. And I, you know, wish you, you know, the best as you continue to educate people. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's become my passion. And, uh, you know, the book is just not about my father, but it's about what happened to each member of the crew because something different happened to each guy. Five of the men, came back, but five of them did not. And also it's about all those courageous Belgian people that risked their lives trying to help my dad and other members of his crew, mm. who if, because if the Germans, the Gestapo found out about it, those people would have been arrested, uh, tortured, and either sent to concentration camps or shot. And some of the people who helped my dad and other members of his crew did meet that fate. So it's really bigger than my, you know, my dad, you know, it's, a, it's about all the men who fought in the 8th Air Force, all the, the people who fought during, during World War II. Um, and as you say, it's, uh, yeah, I didn't write the book uh, to try to make money. If you're an independent author, you're not going to make a lot of money. You have to be a famous person <laughs> to make a lot of money writing a book to get that exposure. But uh I just feel so strongly and uh, keep passing that message out and trying to uh, educate people that uh, it's just became my kind of uh, life's work, I guess you might say. 
life's work, absolutely. Um, before I let you go, last question is, um, the day you and your um, dad went to Belgium, I know he was treated like a celebrity. Take us back to that time. What was it like for you and for your father? It was pretty incredible. My dad had made a, a couple of tri trips to Belgium uh, prior to that. Uh, in 1989, they erected a memorial to my dad and his crew in the little village of Mackenwaz, Belgium, uh, near where the plane uh, came down. And uh, in 1994, it was the 50th anniversary of the liberation of Belgium and my dad's plane going down. So my parents asked me if I would accompany them uh, to the ceremonies. They were getting a little older. Um, and so actually uh, my wife and I, and then my uh, other sister, Nancy, uh, accompanied them to the, uh, the ceremony, not knowing what we, you know, really to expect. Uh, but it was, that's when it became personal for me because I saw all these places and locations where my dad stayed, these houses and farms where my dad was hidden, uh, met uh, one of his helpers that uh, hid, and, hid him and then just saw you know, the respect and the gratitude uh, of the Belgian people toward my dad. Um, it, it was, I get goosebumps just talking about it now. It was uh, he could have been, could not have been treated any better than the president of the United States. Uh, it was just a, a, a wonderful feeling to be there with him uh, to see, get that recognition, but also go around and kind of see walk in his footsteps uh, when he was uh, serving during World War II. So that was very very meaningful. I bet it was for a remarkable day, remarkable life for your father, your mother, and for you and your family as well. Well, Steve Snyder, producer of and subject in Shot Down, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, I'm delighted to, to have been here. Uh, thank you for the uh, interview, and I, I appreciate it very much. You're quite welcome. And thank you to our audience for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation. For more information about the current 45th Cleveland International Film Festival or any of our upcoming film festivals, please continue to follow us on social media or visit us at clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you.